Hello viewers, I welcome you all to another talk on Heisenberg Time, Energy, Uncertainty Principle and its significance. The objective of today's talk is to facilitate the learners to derive an expression for Heisenberg Time, Energy, Uncertainty Principle. At the end of this talk, learners will be able to explain Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle and its various expressions, derive time energy uncertainty principle, discuss how the concept of Bose orbit violates uncertainty principle. Also, they will verify the uncertainty principle through some simple experiments. According to Heisenberg uncertainty principle, the order of magnitude of the uncertainties in the knowledge of two variables must be at least equal to Planck's constant or greater than or equal to h by 2 pi or h by 4 pi. It can be written as delta x delta p is approximately equal to h, delta e delta t is approximately equal to h, delta j delta theta is approximately equal to h. In another way also we can write delta x delta p is greater than or equal to h by 2 pi. Delta e delta t is greater than or equal to h by 2 pi. Delta j delta theta is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi. Or delta x delta p is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi. Delta e delta t is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi. Delta J delta theta is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi. Thus, the product of uncertainties in both variables is at least equal to h or h by 2 pi. h is a constant, so h by 2 pi is also a constant or h by 4 pi is also another constant. So, we can express uncertainty principles in three different ways like this. Let us now derive time energy uncertainty principle and discuss its significance. Consider the case of a free particle, for example, electron with rest mass m0 and moving along x direction with velocity vx. The kinetic energy of the particle is given by E equal to half m naught vx squared. Now multiply this expression by m naught and divide by m naught. So you will be getting half m naught vx the whole square by m naught. We know momentum is m into v. So m naught vx the whole square can be written as vx squared by 2m0. If delta Px and delta E be the uncertainties in momentum and energy respectively, then differentiate this equation 1. We get delta E equal to 2Px delta Px by 2m0. Separate Px and delta Px, 2 2 cancels. So, Px delta Px will become equal to m naught delta E. Delta Px is equal to m naught by Px delta E. Now, for Px, you substitute as m naught Vx. So, m naught, m naught cancels. We are getting the expression as delta E by Vx. Further, let the uncertainty in time interval for measurement at point x be delta t. Then the uncertainty in position delta x can be found out from the expression for velocity of the particle vx which is equal to delta x by delta t. So from this let us find out what is delta x. It is equal to vx into delta t. From equations 2 and 3 we can write delta x and delta px is equal to delta t delta e. We know delta x delta px is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi. Therefore, substitute this value here 
we get the expression delta t delta e is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi thus we have derived the time energy heisenberg uncertainty principle according to bose atom model an electron in atom revolves in one of the quantized orbits we say quantized orbits because energy of the electron in every orbit is quantized so consider this figure nucleus is here one electron so it is an hydrogen atom this electron is revolving around the nucleus the radius of the orbit is r each orbit has a sharply defined energy with no uncertainty bohr gave an expression for energy of the electron in various orbits for example energy of the electron in the first orbit is given as minus 13.6 by n square electron volts where n is the principal quantum number so if it is first orbit you can simply say the energy of the electron in the first orbit is equal to minus 13.6 electron volts there is no uncertainty at all exactly both with an expression calculated the energy of the electron in the first orbit so if it is exact then we can say the uncertainty in measuring the energy of the electron in that orbit delta e equal to 0 then according to uncertainty relation for a pair of variables energy and time if delta e equal to 0 automatically delta t must be infinite this shows that an electron in an excited state will have infinite lifetime this is in contradiction to the reality we know that electrons cannot stay in an excited state indefinitely and its lifetime is of the order of 10 power minus 8 seconds so if an electron gets energy and gets excited to excited level it will return back to the ground state or some other state by emitting the excess energy in the form of a photon. An electron in an excited state cannot remain for infinite time. For example, when we put on the lamp in our house, the moment we put on the electrons of the atoms derive electrical energy from the electrical supply and gets excited. And when they return to the ground level, they emit the excess energy in the form of photons. That's why we could see the entire room filled with light energy. But according to Bose atom model, energy of the electron could be accurately determined. That means there is no uncertainty in measuring the energy of the electron in an orbit. So delta E equal to zero. According to Heisenberg uncertainty principle, if delta E equal to zero means delta T must be infinite. That means an electron excited to the higher energy levels will remain there for infinite time. If it is so, after putting the lamp on, we will not get light at all. So the concept is that the moment they get excited to higher energy level, they should return back by giving out the excess energy in the form of light. So the room gets filled with light. That means only for a limited time an electron could stay in the excited state so they come back to the ground state again they absorb the electrical energy from the electrical supply and gets excited within 10 power minus 8 seconds they emit the excess energy in the form of photons and come back to the ground state thus the concept of Bose orbit violates the uncertainty principle what is uncertainty principle? If delta E equal to zero, delta T must be infinite. But in real situation, we observe that within 10 power minus 8 seconds, 
the excited electrons come back to the ground state. Thus, the Bose concept of orbits violates uncertainty principle. That's why Bose atom model met with many failures. Let us now verify the uncertainty principle with the help of some simple experiments. First experiment is determination of position of particle by gamma ray microscope. A gamma ray microscope has very high resolution and uses high energy gamma rays for illumination. High energy gamma rays means its energy is high and has very shorter wavelength of light. Consider the case of measurement of the position of an electron in the field of gamma ray microscope. The resolving power is the smallest distance between the two points that can be just resolved by the microscope and is given by delta x equal to lambda by 2 sine theta. In notice, you would have derived this expression. The resolving power of a microscope is given by delta x, which is approximately equal to lambda by 2 sine theta. Where lambda is the wavelength of the light used, theta is the semi-vertical angle of cone of light and delta x is the uncertainty in determining the position of the particle. Now look at the diagram. In order to observe the electron which is at rest, you need to shine a light of high energy. The momentum of the photon is given here as h by lambda. When this photon strikes the electron, the photon gets scattered. Now the scattered photon should be collected by the lens of the eyepiece of the microscope so that we can determine the position of the electron. So when the photon strikes the electron, electron gets disturbed from its position first of all and the scattered photon is entering into the field of view of the microscope. So this is the cone of light and this theta is the semi-vertical angle of this cone of light received by the lens of the microscope. So the photon which was traveling in this direction after colliding with the electron it scattered, it could get scattered in all directions, but the other directions are immaterial. We choose the scattered light with field of view. So the incident photon could be scattered at this extreme position and another one at this extreme position. So all those photons which are scattered between these two extremes could be viewed by this microscope and we can study what is the uncertainty in locating the position of the electron. When a photon of initial momentum P equal to H by lambda after scattering enters into the field of view of microscope, it may be anywhere within this angle 2 theta. It could be anywhere between these two extremes. Thus, its component of momentum Px, so it has scattered, it is in the inclined position. Theta is the semi-vertical angle. Now you find out what is the x component of this momentum. Sine theta equal to opposite side by hypotenuse. So opposite side is P sine theta. That P is angular momentum h by lambda and this is along the positive x-axis and what is the x component of momentum along the negative x-axis so you say it is minus p sine theta so you can find the scattered photons between p sine theta to minus p sine theta as the momentum is conserved in the collision the uncertainty in the x component of momentum is given by so delta px is equal to p sine theta 
minus this side the x component is minus p sin theta so p sin theta minus of minus p sin theta becomes 2p sin theta we know it is equal to 2 into for p you substitute the value h by lambda so you are getting uncertainty in the measurement of momentum is becoming 2h by lambda sin theta so multiply delta x and delta px you can derive the uncertainty principle here so equation 1 and 2 are multiplied delta x dot delta px is equal to lambda by 2 sin theta into 2h by lambda sin theta this two this two gets cancelled this sine theta this sine theta gets cancelled this lambda this lambda gets cancelled thus you find the product of uncertainties in measuring the position and momentum is approximately equal to h which is nothing but the uncertainty principle thus with the help of a gamma ray microscope you are able to determine the product of uncertainties in measuring the position and momentum as equal to the Planck's constant, which clearly verifies the uncertainty principle. Let us consider another experiment. Diffraction of a light photon by a single slit. So here light photons are rushing. This is the slit having a width delta y. Because the photons are traveling along x axis and you have chosen a slit of width delta y in the y axis, you call this width of the slit as delta y. This photons, when they are passing through the slit, they undergo diffraction at the edges of the slit. So one edge of the slit is here, other edge is here. So the photons, when they pass through the slit, they get diffracted by the edges of the slit. What is diffraction? Bending of the light photons at the edges of an obstacle is called diffraction. Diffraction is bending of the light photons at the edges of slit is called diffraction. So the photons which are traveling along x-axis, they undergo diffraction. So they begin to travel in this direction, which is not purely along x-axis. The photons begin to travel in the xy plane. So the photons get maybe scattered in the positive y-axis along this and its momentum could be p sine theta and along the negative y-axis it can be taken as p sine theta how we are getting p sine theta once again it's a right angle triangle you know the photons with the momentum p they are getting diffracted in this direction so it's a right angle triangle so what is the opposite side? Opposite side is the hypotenuse into sin theta. So the uncertainty in measuring the position of the photons on the screen could be anywhere from here to here. So you have to find out the difference between the y components of the momentum. So it will be p sin theta minus of minus p sin theta because one component of momentum is along positive y axis, another component of momentum is along negative y axis. Thus, you find out the uncertainty in measuring the momentum delta p from this experiment. So, a narrow beam of electrons or photons passes through a single narrow slit and produces a diffraction pattern. So, along this direction, intensity will be maximum and if you move away from here the intensity of the scattered light will be decreasing so this so for the first order minimum 
The equation describing the behavior of diffraction pattern due to single slit can be taken as d sine theta, which is equal to n lambda. Here d is the width of the slit. So substitute in the place of d, you substitute what is delta y. So delta y sine theta equal to lambda. Here we have considered n equal to 1. When delta y is the width of the slit, and theta is the angle of deviation corresponding to first minimum. So first minimum is here. So theta is angle of deviation. If the electrons or photons did not undergo any diffraction, they would have traveled along this line. But now the photons or the electrons have undergone diffraction. So they get deviated from its path by an angle theta. So we are very sure that all the electrons or photons have passed through the slit and have produced a diffraction pattern on the screen. But we are not sure at which point in the slit they have passed through. So there is an uncertainty in the momentum because the particles are moving and their direction is changed. So there is some uncertainty in the momentum. The uncertainty in determining the position of the electron is delta y equal to lambda by sine theta. And let us say initially the particles are moving along the x-axis and they have no component of momentum along y-axis. But after diffraction at the slit, they are deviated from their initial path to form the pattern on the screen and have P sine theta as Y component of the momentum may lie anywhere between P sine theta and minus P sine theta. The uncertainty in Y component of the momentum delta P Y can be found out as P sine theta minus of minus P sine theta which gives us 2p sine theta. From de Broglie hypothesis, we know p equal to h by lambda. So the uncertainty in measuring the momentum of the incident particle along y-axis is given by 2h by lambda sine theta. So you know the uncertainty in the momentum, you know the uncertainty in the position. Multiply these two equations, you will be getting this. You simplify you find out that the product of uncertainties in measuring the position and momentum is approximately equal to 2h. Once again, it's a constant. So delta y, delta py, we can approximately say h or 2h. Thus, this relation shows that the product of uncertainties of position and momentum is of the order of Planck's constant. Even this second experiment is also proving uncertainty principle. I hope you would have enjoyed today's learning. We stated the uncertainty principle, its various forms, and we derived the time energy relation of uncertainty principle. Also, we discussed how both fixed orbits violates the uncertainty principle. Then we discuss two experiments which, which verify the uncertainty principle. Thank you all. Hope you enjoy today's session.